Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com on Roku Dwyer Boxing News. For premium picks, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I've noticed that the odds on the Adrian Broner, Paulie Malignaggi fight, a fight I've made a video on, are as absurd as they get. If you go to oddschecker.com right now, you're going to see that some books have Adrian Broner as a 12 to 1 favorite. I'm not joking. Now, the reason I'm making this video is the other day I spoke with a gambler, a fellow gambler, who told me that he was about to bet a lot of money on Adrian Broner. Right? He was convinced that this fight was a complete mismatch. So I listened to him. I think listening is important. He laid out the case. Adrian Broner is a young lion. Adrian Broner has been knocking everyone out. Adrian Broner has a huge knockout percentage. He's unbeaten something like 22 knockouts in 26 fights. What could possibly go wrong against a guy who's 32 who just got knocked down against Pablo Cano. Well, in a word, everything. I actually believe Paulie Malignaggi is a live underdog in this fight. Let me just highlight a few things. This is post the press conference and everything else. In fact, this is my second video on the fight. Let me highlight a few things for you to consider. Number one, the fights in Brooklyn. Right, Pauli Malignaggi, born and raised in Brooklyn. It's going to be a Malignaggi crowd, especially since, and what I'm going to say here is controversial. Many people are going to disagree with me, but let's break with the crowd for a second. Especially since Adrian Broner is not loved. Right, He's not Ray Leonard. Right, He's not Manny Pacquiao, when he enters the ring, you aren't hoping he finds a way. I believe Broner is respected. I don't believe Broner is loved. Let's just say he won't be the loved fight. He won't be the loved fighter in Brooklyn the night of the fight. So let's go through the dynamic here. If Pauli Malignaggi does better than expected, and how hard is that? when the other guy's a 12 to 1 favorite. If Paul Amalinaji is up on his toes dancing behind a jab by the fourth round, folks, the crowd's going to be calling out Malinaji's name, right? I'm just telling you, the close rounds, you have to assume they're going to go to the hometown fighter, right? Let's think this through a little bit further. I know Broner is charismatic outside the ring. No question about it. But it's my belief that inside the ring, he's not going to be as charismatic as Paulie Malignaggi. Understand, Malignaggi, whatever happens outside the ring, happens outside the ring. But inside the ring, Paulie Malignaggi always seems to get the crowd involved. He's the kind of guy who can come in wearing tassels on his sneakers, tassels on his trunks. His style is fan-friendly. He's jumping around the ring, shooting a jab, right? My point to you is simply don't underestimate the charisma factor. Two fighters could fight to a dead heat. The crowd's going to be with the charismatic fighter. I'll tell you what, the judges might be with the charismatic fighter. Go back and look at that Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler fight, right? All I'm saying to you is an argument can be made that Ray Leonard won that fight, and we'll use the word won loosely. He won the fight more on charisma than what he did in the ring. But let's go further on things you need to consider. Pauli Malignaggi has only been stopped twice in his entire career. He's lost four fights, but he's only been stopped twice. Think about the rounds. Round 11, 
against Ricky Hatton. If you look at that fight, you're going to see that what stopped Pauli Malinaji wasn't Ricky Hatton. It was his own cornerman, Buddy McGirt, who threw in the towel. Right? Round 11. Right? Also, Amir Khan. Again, round 11. Now, I want you to look at oddschecker.com. The over-under on this fight, being offered by some books, is nine and a half rounds. Nine and a half. Pauli Malinaji has never been stopped inside of nine and a half. Let's go one step further. If Adrian Broner's last fight was at 135 pounds, why am I to believe that Adrian Broner is going to have punching power at 147 pounds. Who has more mobile power? Adrian Broner or Amir Khan? A much bigger fighter. Understand, Pauli Malinaji is actually taller than Adrian Broner. Let's talk about the kind of power Broner has. He's devastating if you're running into his punches like Tony DeMarco. He's devastating if he's able to have his feet wide apart. Doesn't he have one of the widest foot bases in boxing? But ask yourself, does he have mobile power? If he's fighting an Ali type, an Andre Durrell type, a throwback, a guy from the 1970s really, a guy who's dancing on the outside, if he's fighting a guy who dances and who's operating behind a jab, so even if he runs over to the guy, there's something hitting him in the face, right? If he's fighting that kind of guy and he has to track that guy down without the mobile, excuse me, without the wide foot base, if he's moving his feet, does Adrian Broner still have the same level of power. You tell me. Also, think about who these guys have fought. Pauli Malinaji went the distance against prime Miguel Cotto. You've just heard me mention the fact that Pauli Malinaji fought Amir Khan and Ricky Hatton. Right? Pauli Malinaji just fought Pablo Cano. I personally thought he lost the fight. The judges disagreed with me. They gave it to Malinaji. Excellent. But understand, Pablo Cano's underrated. He just went 12 rounds with Shane Mosley, right? A very big puncher. Pauli Malinaji fought Juan Diaz, the baby bull, a guy who's much more aggressive and much more mobile than Adrian Broner. Both times Malinaji went the distance. Now, comparing who Malinaji has fought at 140 and higher, with who Adrian Broner has fought at 135 and lower, it's not a contest. Let's also remember, too, that Ponce de Leon, with a jab, but without foot speed, went the distance against Adrian Broner. That was a close fight, folks. He went the distance against Adrian Broner. Well, what if Ponce actually had foot speed to go with that jab? What if Ponce could actually think and move around the ring charismatically, like Pauli Malinaji? I'll tell you what, that would make it even more likely, in my opinion, that he would go the distance against Adrian Broner. Finally, and I'm going to speculate here, I have absolutely nothing to support this theory except a gut feeling looking at Phil. I believe Adrian Broner is left-hand dominant. Isn't his punch that closes fights, that lead left hook that he comes in with raised, isn't that his punch? And doesn't he throw it a little bit wide? Well, ask yourself, if you're fighting a right-handed guy who's operating behind a left jab, don't you have a problem because don't you have to throw that left hook over the other guy's jab? Isn't that, isn't that the way it, it would line up? I mean, well, all I'm, all I'm saying is this. I don't believe Broner has the straight right hand, in my opinion, 
to close the distance between him and Paulie Malinaji. I think Broner is going to have a problem catching up to Malinaji. I really do. This is a below the waist fight, isn't it? Isn't it a foot speed fight? You have a guy who is great when you run up to him, right? Who has Broner fought who Broner has had to go after? Who has Broner fought where the guy's actually elusive and Broner has had to cut off the ring on him, right? And if Broner is going to chase a guy, when he gets there, is he going to have great power? Understand, if you're an ambush fighter like Amir Khan used to be, right, you're accustomed to running up to a guy and having your feet set when you get there to deliver punishment, right? It's not an ambush unless you're able to hop out the bushes and act quickly. Is that who Adrian Broner is? Do you think Adrian Broner could chase down an Andre Durrell type and actually when he gets there be prepared to throw very hard punches and does his toolbox include the kind of long right hand that you would need to get by a guy's jab keep in mind Malinaji not only has the jab out he's leaning right look at his fight against Shashenko Shashenko has a great jab he couldn't reach Malinaji couldn't reach him. So the bet I'm recommending here now that actual odds have been posted on the fight and they're absurd is I like the over. Nine and a half rounds. Understand what that means. That means the fight has to get to the midway point of the 10th round. To those who hedge, those odds fractionally, we'll go off fractions because it's easy to figure out, are four to seven. So what that means is you have to bet seven to win four, right? Hedged with Malinaji to win the fight. You're getting eight to one there, eight to one. So understand, understand the dynamic. I could literally come in and bet three and a half to win two on this side of the bet. Then if I bet one, on the other side of the bet to win eight, I'm covered if either happens, right? You don't even have to have even money odds on both sides of the play to be able to hedge it. And because you're getting such ridiculous leverage on the Malinaji side, eight to one odds, you gotta be kidding, against a guy who's never fought at 140 or 147, that's a joke. And so to me, this fight comes down to foot speed. I don't see Adrian Broner's mobile power. Quite frankly, I think on fight night, Malinaji's going to be the charismatic guy in the ring. I think boxing has gotten away from guys who know how to move. I think guys have been too stationary. Malinaji has one of the best jabs in the game. He'll be flexing it before his hometown fans. This could be a disastrous fight for Adrian Broner. Let me point out, too, that Broner is going to weigh the heaviest he's ever weighed in the ring for a fight. Carrying the extra weight, is that going to help or hurt Broner as he's running around the ring trying to catch up with Paulie Malinaji? I think it's going to hurt him. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.